Uh, we sometimes on our money wrap segment talk about going to the spa. We, we often yes. have that teaser. Spa really. time. Yeah, spa time. Um, so, Sue, I don't know if you actually would fancy a manicure, a massage, yes. and, and while you're at it, maybe a bar yes. uh, with a weekly happy hour. Yes, 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 yes everything. Lovely, right? Mm. Yeah, well, well not, we're not talking about a spa today, unfortunately. This would be something that you could enjoy in a place that you least expect these activities to be associated with. You know what, when the time comes, hopefully I will be able to take advantage of the activities really at the spa uh, and at this place that we're going to be talking about, uh, Oasis at Utrum. Mm. Approximately 900 square meter space, the size of about two basketball courts located at Utrum Community Hospital, the result of a partnership between HCA Hospice Care and the philanthropic Lien Foundation. They contributed 2.47 million Singapore dollars towards this project and we find out more about the hospice and also the reception from the community as we speak with Karen Lee who is CEO of HCA Hospice Care. Karen, thank you very much for joining us today. Hi Susan. Hi Karen, Oasis at Utram Day Hospice, it was officially launched this month. You also had a soft launch in July this year. Tell us how the reception has been so far. I think it's been very positive. We've had a lot of visitors and also patients and their family members coming to visit us or spend time at, at Oasis. I think the feedback has been all positive. People are pleasantly surprised because what we have at Oasis is quite different mm -hmm. uh, from what we typically would imagine a day hospice or even a senior daycare center would look like. First of all, it's much bigger than a typical uh, day, day hospice facility. Uh, and I think as you mentioned earlier, Earlier, we have uh, a variety of different spaces and services that's available on site, uh, like our spa lawn, where you can go in for a haircut or a patty mani, or, or just you know to wash your hair and, and have it blown blown dry properly. We also have an indoor greenhouse area where patients and our volunteers can work on little uh, gardening projects. We also have small movie theater where you know patients can uh, have a quiet movie or just have a quiet time on by the by themselves. And yes, we have an open bar as well that serves alcohol for for patients or or visitors who prefer not to have alcohol. Then we also serve up a, a mixture of cocktail, mm -hmm. uh, mocktails. Right. Yeah. Right. I'll probably go for a Milo. But anyway, in any case... <laughs> hey, that works. Milo's good. <laughs> but, uh, you know, as, as much as these, you know, simple joys and or sometimes some would consider luxuries as well are mm. made available, um, it's also interesting that we talk about the, the profile of the people uh, who are at the hospice and whom it serves. Uh, give us a, an idea as to who uh, these people are who are living uh, at this facility. Yeah, so uh, Oasis is a day hospice facility. So we have patients and their caregivers coming in on a daily basis. Uh, they typically drop off their loved ones in the morning and then go home at the end of the day of activities. And we serve terminally ill adults uh, as well as children with life-limiting diseases. So that's why we spoil, we want to spoil them silly, um, you know, because um, as a very real and very limited period of time we can spend with these uh, individuals and we just want to we, we just want to give them all the luxury little luxuries in life uh, that one can imagine and think of yeah and i guess that's why karen it really looks very different your new facility i've seen pictures and it functions also quite differently from regular hospices that we know and of course this is a day center as well Talk to us about the design because the design is, I mean, it's beautiful and how this whole idea was conceptualized. It all started because we wanted, like I said earlier, we wanted to spoil our patients. We wanted to give them something to remember and to distract them from the grim, uh, well, it is grim. Yeah. Uh, I think we built this around uh, the three Ds, uh, even though as it, we have an individual with you know, limited time left, uh, we thought that maintaining dignity for the individual is very important. We've lived a whole life and we've all got our own personalities. We don't suddenly become the same and cookie cutter just because we are diagnosed with a life limiting uh, condition. Um, so we want to maintain that and in designing the space we wanted to provide that option and to respect that, that 
uh, personality. The second D, which is diversity, uh, we recognize that along with the different personalities and interests, we should provide options. Uh, it should not uh, be a common space where everybody has to gather at the same time and do the, perform the same activity. So we, we have deliberately worked with designers to carve out little corners uh, which will allow our patients and their caregivers to choose what they want to do and, and have the appropriate space to do so. And finally, development. Um, just because we only have a few months or a few weeks left to our lives, that doesn't mean that we can't learn new things and experience new uh, hobbies. The design of the space was curated with that in mind. Um, so it would facilitate us bringing in different activities. Um, so the space is either multi-purpose or uh, for specific hobbies and, and activities with, with made provisions. Mm. And Karen, when you talk about these facilities, I mean, going back to the drawing uh, board when, when all these were being discussed with the interior designer or the architect, um, were these also, say, ideas that were taken into consideration, suggested by patients uh, that you had who said, oh, you know, it would be nice to have this, it would be nice to have that, or maybe the caregivers who offered up their own suggestions as to what my mom or my dad would appreciate at this facility? Oh yes, very much so. At HCA Hospice Care, we've, we've been providing uh, home hospice and daycare services uh, for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it, and our interactions and the feedback from our patients and the caregivers is, is really the inspiration for, for Oasis. Um, we've had other limitations in other facilities before and even visiting patients at home, uh, they have shared with us their aspirations, their wishes, and you know, we basically collated everything and tried our very best to make, make a dream come true right. in Oasis. You have quite a number of facilities and activities, Karen at Oasis and Utrum. You've mentioned a few to us as well. Many of them are actually facilities that we don't see actually elsewhere in other day centers or hospice centers, to be honest, right? I mean, a, a bar that serves alcoholic drinks, wow. A and then a spa. <laughs> Do you have any facilities that are very popular? with people who attend the day center at this time? Like a long waiting queue? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so we do have a queuing, a booking system yeah. uh, for the different services at, at the day center. Uh, and our patients and caregivers are encouraged to pre-book. Um, so the spa lawn is, is very popular. Mm. Um, you know, and, and we have volunteers coming in at specific days of the week. Um, so that's usually booked out. Um, you know, the bar is ever popular, ever green. Uh, so when our volunteers comes in to do their TGIF mm. evenings uh, and afternoons, um, well, there's no need to queue for it because, you know, people can just crowd around the bar. Um, we also have a dental service on site. We mm. have a full, full, fully equipped uh, dental clinic. Um, again, we have a volunteer dentist who will come in to provide the services. I think here, I think we want to give a shout out because a lot of times, even ourselves, we mm. don't always go to the dentist often enough. Yes. Uh, yeah, and uh, we feel that, you know, it's even more important for our seniors, uh, the elderly, to to visit, to go to the dentist. Not not for funky procedures, but you know, for basic mm. dental cl uh, cleaning and hygiene. And that just does so much, you know, to boost uh, the personal confidence. Just a quick word here, Karen. You mentioned the word volunteer several times. You have volunteer dentists and volunteers at the spa. Are all of these activities, facilities, managed by volunteers? So uh, Oasis is uh, run by full-time staff yeah. um, of nurses, you know, uh, um, healthcare assistants. Um, we also have nursing aides on site, and these are full-time staff of HCA Hospice Care. Um, we also have doctors and nurses visiting, uh, providing clinical support. But these are for core activities and for care of the patients. A lot of these other uh, frills on the side of additional services that we provide. Uh, we leverage very much on volunteers, both on a personal basis as well as uh, corporations. Wow, that's amazing. That's brilliant. Mm. Are you still in need of more volunteers, Karen? All the time. All the time. <laughs> Tell us how people can volunteer with you. And what sort of roles they, yeah. they can take up. So we run uh, a series of different programs at, at Oasis as well as uh, for our patients at home. You can write in to us at our website. Uh, we'll get back to you. If you have any special skills, any mm. special um, interests, we'll be happy to explore that as well and see how we can incorporate that into our programming. We're always looking for new, new things to do.
Excellent. Uh, Karen Lee is speaking with us. She is CEO of HCA Hospice Care. And you can find out more about them and how to reach out to them would be by their website, as Karen mentioned, hca.org.sg. So, all right, all, we've, we've heard so much about all these wonderful facilities and services there. What about costs, though? I mean, are, are these going to be paid for by the patients who, say, want to color their hair or, or have a massage? Uh, are these something that they would uh, fork out as extras? No, we provide all services at no charge to patients. Oh, and all this inclusive. Is, yes, I all like inclusive. Like a country club membership. Uh, yes, <laughs> just sign up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, wonderful to know. Um, let's also talk about uh, palliative care. How do you hope uh, that you know these facilities and services might be able to help dispel some misconceptions we have about those who who may require you know um, such care and who may be terminally ill. I think we really want to dispel the gloom and doom around uh, death and dying. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to say that even if we, there's a limited of time, there's still a lot of possibilities. One can still enjoy life. This limited period could very well be, you know, one of the highlights in one's uh, personal journey. Um, so I think we want we want Oasis to be a beacon, to be an example, and of how this can happen. How do you see the model that you're running at Oasis at Utram? How does this fill and address the gap that seems to exist in the market now? So I think there's still a bit of taboo uh, speaking about death and dying. Mm -hmm. uh, people are tiptoeing around the the, the the idea um, and conversation. So at Oasis, we also want to promote, we want to give a space that's happy, it's cheerful, um, and, and also with the appropriate spaces for, for such conversations to happen. I think a lot of caregivers suffer from guilt when they yeah. find that they have to send uh, their loved ones to a facility because of personal commitments or work commitments. Uh, I think we want, we want to we want to provide a space and programs and services to an extent such that caregivers do not need to feel guilty because their loved ones come to us, they have a great time and then they go home and they share their experience and it's just overall happy and sure for, for the family. Mm. And do you expect that what HCA Hospice Care has done with uh, this uh, Oasis facility, that it's, it's already begun to spark conversations. Maybe it started mm. with a few raised eyebrows, um, but then it sparked more conversations and, and maybe other players are considering, yeah, this is a good idea yeah, actually yeah. to introduce uh, at our own facility. Yes, that's exactly what we hope to do, and we welcome you know visitors to come visit the facility, experience our services, and we'll be very happy if this you know lead the way in changing the landscape. Karen, before we let you go though, uh, we yeah. kind of want to know if you have other plans to roll out more of such uh, centres. I know that this particular centre was supported initially by the Lien Foundation, and they've contributed quite a big sum. They're also very active in the area that we're talking about today. Do you hope that you would be able to either start new centres or retrofit existing centres in Singapore? I mean, we have an ageing population, so this is something that is quite important going forward. Yep, you're absolutely right. Um, even now, we are looking at our other centres um, and we're looking at retrofitting them. We may not be able to replicate the entire model due to resource and space constraints, uh, but I think there are important lessons that we've learned from this journey and I think we can apply a lot of these lessons and experience to the other centres. Uh, maybe a little bit more modest, but um, certainly in spirit, in design and, and in the programming for these centres, we, we, we look... To, to, to change that over time. Very heartening, uh, Karen, to yeah. know of all that's going on at Oasis, at Utram, mm. and uh, that's part of uh, Utram Community Hospital, located at 10 Hospital Boulevard. And for our listeners, if you'd like to find out more about the work that they do, the facilities and services they offer, do visit their website at hca.org.sg. And as Karen mentioned earlier, volunteers always, uh, yeah. always yeah. Uh, needed as well. Karen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Karen Lee is CEO of HCA Hospice Care.